So what is an occupancy grid map? An occupancy grid map is a 2D representation of the environment. And it's actually very similar to an old school map that you use to navigate through a city. Except that it's stored inside a computer or inside a mobile robot and is used for navigation tasks. For example, for driving around, for mapping the environment, for localizing. All those techniques typically use maps and often occupancy grid maps. So an occupancy grid map consists of so-called occupancy grid cells. And an occupancy grid cell refers to a specific place in the environment. Let's say a small 5 by 5 centimeter area. And the occupancy uh, grid map stores the information if this cell is either occupied by an obstacle or if it is free space. So you can see this being very similar to a grayscale image. An image consists of pixels and the occupancy grid map is the image and the pixel refers to an occupancy grid cell. So if it takes a value corresponding to a black color, that means that this place is occupied by an obstacle. If you put in a white color, it means this space is free space. And the image that you will generate from such an occupancy grid map will be very similar to an, uh, to an architectural floor plan where, for example, you have dark areas um, indicating walls or other obstacles in the environment. And white represents free space. The only problem that we have in reality, especially if we work with mobile robots, is that we are not certain if a place in the environment is occupied by an obstacle or if it's free space. We can only estimate that and we typically use sensor data, noisy sensor data to do that. And therefore we maintain for every cell a probability. A probability that this cell is occupied or not. So it's called the occupancy probability. An occupancy probability of 1 means this cell is for sure occupied and an occupancy probability of 0 means this cell is free space for sure and everything in between tells us I'm more or less certain that it's either free or occupied. So the occupancy grid map is a set of those small probability distributions and we typically use independent probability distributions to represent that space. This is not necessarily the case in reality that the places are independent of each other. It's just used to simplify the math. And the occupancy grid maps typically use three main assumptions. So the first one is um, a place can be either occupied or free. Those grid cells are independent of each other. And we typically assume the world to be static. So there's nothing moving around in that world. And then we use sensor data such as a laser rangefinder, a stereo camera, an RGBD camera, um, a sonar or any other type of range sensor um, to provide us with information if we can measure a cell as being occupied or free. And mathematically speaking, we are using a static state binary based filter to estimate a probability distribution for every place. If you have a high quality sensor, so, so which can measure distances very well, you typically get very sharp maps in the environment like this one over here. If you are having a more noisy sensor, you may have more blurry walls and the map doesn't look that sharp. There has been an efficient algorithm that has been proposed by Moravec and Alphys in the 1980s in how to turn sensor information, in this case sonar data, into an occupancy grid map so that we can estimate four different places in the environment if they are occupied by an obstacle or if they are free space. And these types of maps are used in a large number of robotics applications today. Um, so most indoor robots, for example, use this type of obstacle maps in order to navigate the space. Um, it could be an intelligent um, hoover which drives their own in your environment, or it could be your mo uh, lawnmower. So most robots actually use some form of map and often use occupancy grid maps for localizing, for planning path, for mapping the environment, for exploration tasks, basically for everything. So these occupancy grid maps are nearly everywhere in robotics. It's important to understand their properties. Um, there are of course also extensions of the occupancy grid maps, for example for 3D spaces, then it's not a small area in the environment, then the map represents a voxel, uh, so called a voxel grid in 3D. Um, things may become a little bit more complicated also if you have dynamics involved, but overall they are basically using this very simple contact concept of using um, a single variable for a small area in the environment, estimating if the world is free or occupied. 
So I go by, hope I gave you an idea how occurrency grid maps work, what you can do with them, and what the key properties are. And they actually appear nearly everywhere in robotics.